Also in this video, I wanted to show, a lot of people have been asking what tool should I buy if I'm starting out, um, setting up guitars and stuff like that. So there is a basic set uh, or a basic group of tools you will want and always you need good screwdrivers. I've got a nice small crosshead there, I've got a nice small flat there and then we go up in size, um, I've got a real good crosshead there and um, so screwdrivers, always need good screwdrivers. Don't get the cheap crap, 175 for three from bloody plant shop or wherever we are from plant shop. I also buy these. These are for truss rods. I've got a five mil there and a four mil. Made by Nielsen, Nielsen tools are really good. These come from China, they're about four pound delivered a piece. These are great for truss rod work because you can get right into a truss rod. Uh, we've got an angled thing, it's again at an angle and you're not mucking about, knocking the tuners or scratching the guitar. There's nothing worse again at handling having it set up like that and having to work it like that every two, keep putting it in every two seconds. This one, you could just turn all the way around. So I love these, T-bar um, hex keys they are, or something similar. So that's basic tools, you don't necessarily need them, you get by way out. And what I would suggest that you always have is a set of radius gauges that sit under your strings and you can set the radius of your bridge and check the radius of your neck blah 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 always get a set of these about 10 13 quid probably even cheaper if you look on amazon or somewhere fret rocker one of my favorite tools these are great because you can do you've got three four different lengths so you can check the rock of your frets wherever you are you only ever do three frets at a time you need one of these get a good one don't get a cheap crap that's not been milled because it won't work. I had one of these that wasn't quite level and it was a pain in the arse and a waste of time. Then you need a string action ruler for stringing and stringed instruments by the rock. So you can measure the action of a 12 fret for instance or measure your knot height or whatever. Invaluable piece of kit these. You always want one of them. A good set of feeler gauges. Now your Americans will all go for imperial, non-metric. Me being English and British or English I do everything in millimetres and centimetres, so I've got a metric one. So mine goes from one millimetre right down to 0.1 millimetres. Uh, your 0 0.25, 0 0.3, 0 0.4 will be invaluable for measuring string height between your first fret and the bottom of the string. Uh, you definitely need one of those and a notched straight edge. Your first notched straight edge should be a 25 and a half one side and a 24 and 3 quarter Gibson side. So you've got a Gibson and a Fender, uh, two most common neck scales. Your Gibson's is your 24 and 3 quarter inches, and your Fender is 25.5 inches. This obviously sits on your fingerboard, over your fingerboard, and so you can, it goes over the frets, so you can check how level your neck is, or how straight your neck is. Absolutely brilliant piece of kit. These were 30 odd quid when I bought mine, you can pick them up for 15 quid now. Get a good one. I've got eight different scale lengths of these. I've got base ones, I've got PRS ones, I've got really odd measurements. Uh, you can never, you, you, you need one, you need one of that. So if you're setting out, you need that. A couple of additional things. String winder. Blah, 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 so you can tune it for your tuners there. So you can wind your tuners faster. I've actually got one where you can pull the end off and you can fit that on the end of a Dremel or a drill, which I use. Absolutely brilliant. Going to save you a lot of time, save you a lot of faffing about. And one more thing, this is like a, uh, it's like a welder's tool. There's just a basic set of small files ranging from somewhere like one and a half mil right down to nothing. Uh, you know what I mean? Look how thin this is. Well, look how thin these are. Really, really, this one here is your thinnest. Look at that. And these have got like a serrated file edge. I don't even know where I see it on camera. These are for cleaning the gunk out of your nut slots and you can cut the nut slot a little bit deeper. Now, when you move on to stuff later on, when you cut your nuts, you can go on to something like a Hosco nut file set. They cost me 75 quid, Japanese made, super sharp, always sharp. They're great for cutting a nut. But for the time being, you could actually do it with a needle file. You, oh, you will want a set of needle files. Go and get yourself a, a set of something like a brand like Hilka. Hilka, a great tool maker. Don't buy your cheap crap like Toolzone. 
Hilker or Nielsen tools are very good. They're not quite snap-on, uh, they're not quite Mac tools, but they are very good brands. I always try and buy Hilker or um, Nielsen where I can. A uh, lot cheaper, but still great, great tools. So that is it. And you can, like I say, you can cut one up with a needle file and finish off with something like that. So that's your basic set of tools.